Hey everyone! So I figured I'd just do a little follow-up video on the old Unimog because it died in the last video and a bunch of you have been asking about it so uh, let's just see if we can figure out what went wrong with this and get it going again. Right, so I'm already pretty sure that it's a fuel issue. It really felt and sounded like it just wasn't getting fuel to the engine and a lot of you guys pointed that out as well. But uh, I'm already losing daylight really quickly, so uh, let's just get this thing up to the garage so I can actually see what I'm doing in a couple of hours. Right, well, uh, it really only took me like 20 minutes to get it up here, but uh, that was more than enough for the light to completely disappear. Or at least enough that I can't really film anything out here, even if I set up lights. So uh, let me just do a quick little... Bam! Much better. Now, I have a suspicion that it is the fuel filters that gotten clogged up on this. Because back when I got this, several years ago, it had been sitting for a really long time. And already back then, I had issues with the tank having rust and dirt in it, and that clogged up the filters, so I replaced them back then, but that's quite a few years ago now. And also, it has been sitting and not driving a whole lot lately, so uh, I'm suspecting that that's just what's gone wrong again. So uh, let's start by checking out the fuel filters. We're gonna start over here by the fuel tank, because down here we have this little pre-filter, so uh, let's just take that apart and see how it looks. Well, there is a little bit of dirt on that, but that's not really enough for it to be the cause of the problems. But I'm still gonna clean this off now that I'm in here. Mm. Alright, so that was definitely not dirty enough to have been the main issue, but that one is a very coarse filter. It's really only meant to take the really big stuff like the rust flakes or grass or bicycles, but all of that really fine stuff, all the powdery rust and such, it's still gonna get through to the main filters. So let's go and have a look at those because they are definitely due for a replacement anyway. On this one, the locks actually do work, but it's still easier just to remove the whole thing. So over here on the passenger side of the engine, we have the two main fuel filters. And this whole uh, filter console, it's exactly the same as you'll find on the 421s, or really just a lot of other Mercedes diesels. So uh, there's not really anything special that goes into this, so uh, let's just get those off and see what's in there. Well, they're not looking good. By the way, yes, there is a tray under it. 
Don't worry. Come on. Oh yeah. <laughs> and that's all of that rust stuff that I was talking about. This is definitely the problem. That was the one that is first in line, so uh, let's just check the other one. Well, it's already looking more clear, this stuff. Yeah, that's not so bad. So it does look like the first one caught most of it. Go ahead and get some new filters in this thing. And by the way, here's the Bosch number for this, if you're looking for filters like this. But there's actually a lot of different numbers for these filters because, like I said, they're in a lot of different vehicles. Oops, this way. Right, let's get them back in here. Now it can be a little bit tricky to keep these in place, so I like to give them just a tiny bit of some kind of grease, just enough to make them sticky. Because they're mounted upside down, so that just helps to keep them in place in the groove up here. There we go. This one in here first. And exactly the same for this one. Nice. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get the air out of this. Probably do this one first. Oh, there we go. Yep. There we go. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and see if that did the trick. Now, uh, the temperature has actually dropped below zero. The ground is freezing up around me, so it's gonna be a bit of a cold start as well. And there's still some air in the system, so uh, it may struggle a little, but uh, let's just go ahead and give it a try and see what happens. <laughs> the door is frozen.
And just like that, it's really dark again. But this time I did just go ahead and put some lights up. So it turns out it was just the fuel filters that were clocked up. She's running nice and strong again. I wasn't really suspecting anything serious, but I also do know that the engine is not 100% in this thing. It is burning a lot of oil. So I suspect I have to go in and replace the piston rings. And if I have to do that, I may as well overhaul the entire engine. But the thing is, when I got this, something like 12, 13 years ago by now, it was actually in a really poor state. It had been used as a parts truck, so a lot of things was missing from this. The entire front axle was missing, and a lot of things from the interior was missing, and also a lot of stuff under the hood was missing. So I had to go and put this thing together best as I could with what I had. And like I said, this was like 13, I actually think it's more like 14 years ago. Well, it was definitely a long time ago. And at that time, I just didn't have the same knowledge or the same skills or the same tools available that I do now. So not all of the repairs I did back then were ideal. But that being said, it's actually held up really well, despite not getting the love it deserves. And this thing is actually very dear to me because this was my first Unimog and also my first real off-road vehicle. And I've had a lot of fun hours in this thing. But over the past couple of years, there really has been a growing list of things that I need to fix on this. It just has a bunch of issues all around, and I guess now we can add cleaning the fuel tank to that list. But uh, let's just go over it real quick. Now for the most part, the bed is actually alright. It has a few rust spots along it, but that's really it. But the bottom of the bed is completely rotted out. That's also why the rear fenders are actually falling off, because they're bolted to that wooden bed. I actually have a original military roof rack up in there that I meant to put on this, but uh, never really got around to it. But also the uh, battery box, that's just a really quick home crafted thing that needs some attention as well. Spare tire is not really the correct one. The rim on it is not the correct one either. Speaking of tires, they're really all very bad and all of them needs to be replaced. And half the issues on this thing is actually the front axle. It is very worn. It didn't even belong to this vehicle originally. I'm thinking it was from either some kind of farming Unimog or maybe an MB track or something like that because it's very worn compared to the rest of the vehicle. The U-joints are completely gone. The air locker is leaking a lot of air so I can't keep the lockers on for very long. And also the, uh, what do you call them? The bearings that the swivels sit on, they're also completely worn out. So uh, there's a lot of things to fix on that axle. Now another big part of issues that this thing has is the engine. Like I already said, it's burning oil and also I know that the alternator isn't working and there's a bunch of small leaks here and there and a lot of hoses that are just about to give out and I don't even have the right air cleaner box in here. It's actually breathing through an air cleaner from a 421 Unimog but that's obviously way too small for this big engine and it also means that the snorkel is not even hooked up. Also the wiring in here is a complete mess. A lot of this stuff was just gone back when I got it so it's been patched together best as I could back then but it's also something that I really need to clean up and redo. And there's also just a whole bunch of little things all around that we can get into whenever we start this project. But actually, fortunately, this is not very rusty. The cab, it has like a few spots at the bottom of the doors and out in the corners, it's starting a little, but overall this cab is really solid, which is increasingly rare for these old round cabs. Also, if you're wondering why the hood is bent up here, 
That's actually my fault. One time I forgot to lock the two hatches and it fell off while I was driving and I couldn't see that from the driver's side so I just ran it over. So uh, it's sort of just roughly straightened back out up there. And also inside the cab. Let me just get some light. Stay. Okay. As for the cab, it's actually pretty intact and mostly original on the inside. Now, again, a lot of things were missing when I got it, so I had to improvise in a few spots, but there's not really a whole lot to them in here, but it could use a good cleanup in here and some more sound insulation. And, and also the seats, they're actually from a Humvee. This one has just been modified ever so slightly to give it this weird angle, but other than that, it was a pretty good fit in here. And I actually much prefer these to the original seats because they have a little more shape to them, so they're much better at keeping you in your place. The original seats are more just like a cushion and they'll have you sliding all over the cab. But these are actually working out really nicely. Now I do plan to take this on as a YouTube project one of these days, but for now it's just nice to have it up and running again. And also, I only have so much room in my workshop, so uh, I gotta finish up some of my other projects first. So uh, thanks for watching this one, and we'll see ya.